Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle. A Christian girl's guide to modern dating. We are just two single girls trying to help you navigate dating well as Christian women. Another day, another episode. Another episode. But before we get started, Bethany, it's your turn for question of the day. Okay. What you got? If you had to lose one of your five senses, oh gosh. which one would you pick and why? I... Have actually been asked this question before. Okay. I have a, I would lose my sense of taste. What? But listen, because then I would just eat whatever's healthy and I'd be super healthy all the time. Mm, but I don't think that would work because you eat because it tastes good. And so you would be like, mm. Exactly. So then when it came time to eat, I'd just be like, okay, well, I know I need to eat. So I'm going to eat something healthy because I can't taste it. Because it takes all that the fun out of all the crappy food. It takes all the fun out of all the food. I know. That would but be I horrible. Don't, I, sight and sound are just not an, even an option. Smelling would be nice because then you can still like Yeah, you're going to smell all that awesome food that you can't taste. That's true. But you smell candles <laughs> and like bonfires and like all the nice things. You could smell something's burning, which would be kind of important. <laughs> and then <laughs> sense of touch. I'm too like touchy-feely for that. Yeah. I've really thought this through. Well, I think you've come to the wrong so, conclusion. Okay, well, <laughs> no, teach their own, right? I, yes. What is I your answer? Would, I would say smell. Okay. That would be hilarious if I'd be like, I would say the sense of taste. <laughs> <laughs> Ridicule me and then steal my answer. <laughs> no, I mine would be smell. I don't think I smell super well. I don't think anyway. you do either, because every time I ask, like, do you smell that? You're like, no. Yeah, so I don't think I have a super strong sense of smell. So I think if I lost it. It wouldn't be missing it much. It wouldn't be the worst one. All I could live without that one, I think. That's fair. Fairly simply. Okay. So that's my reasoning. That's a good question. So, yeah. Okay. So speaking of questions, what is our question we're talking about today? We are talking about where to draw the line between non-negotiables and preferences when it comes to like what you're looking for in someone you're dating. Okay. So first let's define what is a non-negotiable. Non-negotiable typically is referring to an aspect of a guy's character. So yes. his faith, his, the way he treats people, the way he, you know, interacts, carries himself, like all of right. that kind of stuff is kind of wrapped up in someone's character. Those are typically the things that you're looking for that are just like, if he, like you always say, if he's rude, I don't care how cute and wonderful he may seem. If he's rude, I'm just not going to date him. Yes. That kind of thing. Yeah. And I think we, we've talked about non-negotiables in the past and I think when we say oh outside of like their faith there aren't many other like true non-negotiables necessarily but when we say faith it's not just is he a Christian check yes or no we're talking about how does he live that out and we're essentially talking about his character so there's more to it than just does he believe in Jesus when we say his faith is a non-negotiable it's how does that look in his day-to-day -day life is he patient is he kind is he selfless is he teachable and on and on it goes those things are non-negotiable now with those and with anything else we're going to talk about today we're not saying the perfection of patience or the perfection <laughs> of kindness is a non-negotiable that's a good point but is there a true kindness of heart that you see in him even though it's not perfect, he's already manifesting it and improving in it. Yeah. there's That's kind of, what you're looking for. Yeah. You're looking for just signs of potential, even where there's not perfection. Yeah. And when there's not perfection too, does he grieve over his sin? Does he repent? Does he make strides to change whatever that is? Because no one's perfect, but what does he do with that lack of perfection? Yeah. Is a big thing to me, too. Yeah. Is there, like, a sense of humility when he messes up to yeah. take ownership and to do something about it rather than the sense of pride of, like, oh, well, that's just the way I am or they deserved it or yeah. whatever that looks like. Yeah. A lot of things get swept under the rug of, well, that's just my personality. Mm -hmm. Your personality is just as fallen as everything else. <laughs> yes. So that's not an okay, like... <laughs> excuse. Excuse. And I think another thing that kind of gets used as a blanket excuse is people say, oh, well, I'm working on it. And I'm like, but are you though? You've been saying that for a while. Is there any progress? Like, that's a huge thing, too, is, oh, I'm working on it. 
is fine to say if someone truly is. Is there improvement? Is there progress being made in this endeavor? If not, that's probably just a quick catchphrase to excuse a bad behavior. That's a really good point. If y'all have been with us for a while now, you know we've had several conversations about non-negotiables in regards to faith and character. If you want some more in-depth information on all of that, you can check out the Girls and Their Lists episode from season one and the Can You Be Too Picky episode from season two. I just went back and listened to both of those before we recorded this and we go very in-depth as far as what true non-negotiables should be based on scripture and we break that down and we talk about, you know, things that are okay to be picky about, things you should probably not be super picky about. So we're not going to rehash all of that today. So if you want to go figure out what we had to say about that, you can go back in the archives a little bit (laughs) and look into all of that. Yes. So today, like you said, we're not going to rehash all of that. We're kind of taking a different run at this. We're coming at this from a different angle because as you know, so we've talked about non-negotiables. So preferences then are going to be things that are more based on personality, interests, appearance, daily rhythms of life, all of those things that are not things that you will see in the Bible as character traits that all Christians should possess. So today, the kind of twist we're taking on this is really looking at the specific question of can preferences be non-negotiables? What would you say? Yes. I agree. I think there are some within reason, and we'll get into that. I mean, everybody knows that I am only going to date a guy that's taller than me. That is just, there's no biblical backing for that. (laughs) It's just, that is a hard and fast rule for me. So I definitely think that there are some things that each, I don't think this list should be 82 items long. No. This this is probably going to be a shorter list, but there can be a few things that may be preferences to somebody else, but that are super important and non-negotiables to you. And that's fine. And like what you were saying, it's not going to be super long. We sat down to think about our own. And I mean, I think we both came up with like two or three. Yeah, it wasn't a huge list. We actually talked about this at dinner last night with some of our friends and we pulled the table. And I think the question was, okay, name three things that are non-negotiables that are not your character and that are not faith related. Yeah. And it was hard to get to three, like for for most of us. So anyway, we thought we would run through some of those to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at here. Yeah. So Bethany, what was one of yours? I said, well, my final thing is a shared sense of humor. (laughs) It took me a while to get around (laughs) to what I was really trying to say, because what I originally said was someone who likes to laugh. And it was pointed out to me that only the Grinch who stole Christmas doesn't like to laugh. Like, that's not really quite specific enough, which I was like, okay, fair enough. But what I was getting at is, like, I don't need to marry a comedian. He doesn't have to be hilarious. I need to think he's funny. But someone who likes laughing and enjoys humor, but then at the same time, the same things I think are funny. Yeah. Because banter is so important to you. So someone yes, that you can have that with. Yes, to be that. Because if I'm trying to, like, banter, be witty, give someone a hard time, and it's just, like, crickets. Not landing. <laughs> that, like, that's something that's so much of just how I interact with people that if we're talking about long-term relationship here, that's got to be there for me. hmm Yeah. So. I think that's a great one. Because so much of depth, I think, of your relationship comes when there's that joking and Mm -hmm. that, you know, going back and forth and making fun of each other. And yeah. Well, and especially for me. Oh, that's how I show affection. Yeah, exactly. So it's just something that's really important to me. Yeah. What was one of yours? One of mine was actually that he likes sports. And I can get on board with that one a little bit too. That was kind of, I was like, oh, me too. And for a while I felt kind of bad saying that because I'm like, Kristen, is that really necessary to be a non-negotiable, but sports have always been a big deal to me, to my family. We like going to games. We all played sports. We like watching them on TV. I mean, you and I and Lindsay and Melanie and all of our friends, Mm -hmm. we congregate around sports a lot. It's a really big part of my life. And I think it would be really hard to date someone who was not interested in that Mm -hmm. because then even if they weren't interested but they would come along I would feel bad all the time because I'd be like you don't really like this I want to do this like that's like me being willing to go hiking with somebody all the time and hating it but I'm just going to do I would feel awful having to do that to him yeah and I like you know being competitive and I like someone that has a little bit of a competitive edge to them too and that a lot of times comes from Sports. Well, and within that, you're not saying he has to be an absolutely 
crazy fan no, about no. everything. No. He has to know all the players and all the stuff and whatever. It's just, does he enjoy going and watching a football game yeah. and, like, being into it? Yeah, exactly. There's it's, not this, he doesn't have to like a certain team and hate yeah. all the same teams I do. He doesn't have to even, you know, like you said, have this plethora of knowledge about it. It's just, yeah. Does yeah. he enjoy it? Yeah. Does he find it fun? And I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Another one that was brought up is someone who is willing to try anything once. I loved this answer. I think that's such a good one. Within reason, yeah. we said, with the caveat, don't, no be, sharks. don't be stupid. Now, and I would go, like, swimming with the sharks. If there was a cage, I think that would be cool. If uh, there's not, like, just hanging out in the water with no... Not, I'm not going to do that. I would have to be head over heels for a guy if he <laughs> asked me to go <laughs> cage diving with sharks. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, so... I think that's a really good one. Someone, oh, I mean, someone who's a stick in the mud, who doesn't want to try anything. Yeah. Like, who who wants to date that person? Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think that's good. And then I, one of, another one of mine is kind of the same thing as, like, not a stick in the mud, but, like, not too much of a homebody. This is a big one for me. I, don't get me wrong, I love staying at home and doing nothing just as much as the next person, within reason. But I also like to go out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. Spontaneously. To just go try a new restaurant, go check out this fair downtown or, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. And if someone just always wants to stay home, we're going to have some clash. Mm. Now, I think within that, there's give and take on these. Oh, totally. Just because you're not identical in what being a homebody versus not looks like, just because that's not exactly the same as you doesn't mean it's not going to work. I'm saying someone who absolutely never wants to leave and won't let go of that. Mm -hmm. That just won't work with me. Yeah. And I think what was interesting too, when we were having this conversation at dinner last night is someone else at the table was like, Oh, I kind of like somebody that's a homebody yeah. because I am. And so I, again, I know we already said this, but just so we're making this point, these are things that are going to be different from person to person. So whereas Bethany is like, I don't want somebody to like to stay home all the time. You may love to stay home and you may want somebody who doesn't <laughs> want to go all the time because you just want to chill and stay home and do things at home and watch yeah. movies or cook or I don't know. I'm listing random things you do at home. But <laughs> like I said, these are some of ours. They don't have to be yours. Totally. And like I said, there are preferences that have become non-negotiable. Yeah. So it's going to be different. It's just good to, to know what those things are mm -hmm. for you. Exactly. It's just putting that thought into it. Yeah. Like, hey, what is really, really important? Like if you had to take your list and rank it, mm -hmm. these are going to be the things at the top. Yeah. After all, like yep. we said, the character and the faith and everything. Um, I know I already said this, but he has to be taller than me. Yep. Was the Nothing very first that. thing I said. <laughs> If you have spent any amount of time with me, you know that's the yes. very first thing, and that has not changed <laughs> no, the entire time I've had a list. Not at all, and it's fine. Yeah. Another one that was brought up at dinner was common sense, which I would just make sense, of, but it makes total sense. It, yeah, I mean, someone who has common sense, I can totally see why that is non-negotiable yeah. for people. Like, I don't really think much more needs to be said about no, that one. No, not no at all. No big elaboration needs to be. No. <laughs> one other one, so. Part of this was mine and part of this was one of our friends. I said that a guy I'm with has to get along with my family. Mm -hmm. Family's super important to me. And I spent a lot of time with them. And then our friend said that the person that he's with, she needs to, like, come from a, a good family environment. Is that how he said it? Or how, well, like, I think just family that you could mesh with. Yeah. Okay. That's like, a better way to put it. It doesn't have to look like a certain way, but just, like, can you mesh with them? Yeah. And I mean, what's the saying? If you marry the... You marry the family. family. <laughs> it's true. So... Well, what did you say about everybody's crazy, but... Well, yeah, so it's not like you're looking for just people who are just not crazy at all, because everybody's crazy. Mm -hmm. But either you got to be able to put up with their craziness, or maybe you're just a little bit of the same crazy, yeah. and, it, and it works. And it works. But, yeah. Just got to figure that out. Yeah. And then the last one that was brought up was someone who's good with finances. Because maybe the other person isn't, or they need that structure or whatever, which I think that one's super smart. Oh, definitely. I, I'm good with certain parts of my money. I don't budget well. I, mm. I stay within my means, but I don't budget yeah. well. So I think it would be super great to marry someone who's like, here's your budget, Kristen. See, this is what you can work with. I, great. yeah, I stick within a budget someone gives me to the penny. Like, I I'm got jealous. it. No, I'm 
left to my own devices. I'm oh. like you. I don't do it for myself, but if someone gives me, like, whether it be yeah. a work project or anything like that, if someone tells me, okay, you have this much money to spend for this thing, I'm set. So I yeah. I need someone who's a good budgeter. Yes. That's and a great like, way <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Someone who can be like, Kristen, you have $50 you can spend on clothes this month, not a penny more. Yeah. Like, okay, okay. Got it. <laughs> There Thank won't you. be a penny less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There won't be, be a penny more. Forty nine ninety nine. Yep. <laughs> Coming in under budget, darling. You're welcome. Just for you. Yep. <laughs> so I think now that we've kind of given you some examples, one thing that's really important to remember here is it's okay to make things like this non-negotiables. And I think you should, honestly. Oh, totally. However, just be careful with how specific they are. If you'll yes. notice, the things we listed, for the most part, are pretty broad. Mm-hmm. It's not like, he has to have blue eyes. Right. You know? <laughs> like, it's... That would be fantastic, but he doesn't have to. Like, right. make sure you've got some wiggle room here. Yeah. That's super important. So, like I've already said twice now, <laughs> he needs to be taller than me. I'm trying to prove a point here, people. Um, the horse is dead, Chris. I know. Just it. keep on. <laughs> But my preference for height is that he's like 6'3 or taller. You know, I really like really tall guys. Yeah. But the actual non-negotiable is just that he's taller than me. Right. So if he comes in at 5'10", I will still date him. Yeah. But I'm not going to put must be 6'3 or taller yeah. as a non-negotiable. Yeah. I could miss out on a really great guy that's 6'1". Oh, you totally, and that's the thing, you totally will. If you make that window, he must be between 6'2 and 6'5. Yeah. Like, that really narrows it. Whereas if you say taller than 5'7, think of it that way. Yeah. So, and I mean, we've laughed before about, like, my, I think it was in the Girls in Their List episode, my <laughs> way back in high school list, I had on there that I wanted to be with someone who was politically active. Okay, I, real and, quick, was listening to this episode on the bike at the gym the other yeah. day, and I was very grateful I was the only one in there, because I started <laughs> laughing, and I'm like, I for, totally forgot that Bethany had politically yes. aware on her so, high school list. So that is my the very specific example. If you broaden that, today, it's really important to me that someone is at least on a surface level can carry on a surface conversation about current events at least yeah i'm not some like political junkie i I, I, at all by any stretch but i'm aware of general goings on and it's important to me to be able to talk about that kind of stuff with someone else so you take it from that very specific thing and back up a little to the broad and that gives some room for it you know looking different than maybe your absolute ideal in your head Yeah, that's a great way to say it is to think about it and then back up a little bit. Yes. Okay, so let's kind of sum up a little here. True non-negotiables. Now that we've talked about non-negotiables and then preferences and then preferences that are non-negotiables, we've kind of muddied the waters like you wouldn't (laughs) believe. So let's sum up kind of what we really mean. True non-negotiables will be non-negotiable for every Christian woman. They are scriptural. They are character. They are things that are commanded in God's word for all Christians, not just men. There are male and female specific things, but general character is commanded of all Christians. So these are things that you should be too, because the guy you're looking for is going to be looking for those same non-negotiables in someone else. So you should be cultivating those things too. But true non-negotiables are going to be non-negotiable for every Christian woman. Exactly. But then these preferences that become non-negotiables will be different for you than they will be for somebody else. I mean, just listening to me and Bethany, you figured that out as far as what we listed and what we talked about. So those are things that aren't going to look the same for every person. No. And even within your own thought process of those things, the non-negotiables that are really preferential to that list should be short and it should also remain fluid, I think, Mm -hmm. in that there are going to be things that as you grow and mature, the things you're looking for in someone else may change as well. You may not be as tied to sports, let's say, when you're older because life has changed. And so that's not as important to you anymore. That's just an example I'm pulling from thin air. You're also going to learn from your experience. The older you get, you're going to learn from dating other people, things that work in a relationship for you and things that don't. So you're going to learn from that experience and this list is going to change. 
it may not always be super important to me that we laugh at the same things. I think it will, but <laughs> it may not. Yeah. And I, but I have learned from experience that that is a non-negotiable to me. 10 years ago, five years ago, I wouldn't have said that that was one that was non-negotiable. It's important. It's always been like on my list, quote unquote, but it wouldn't have been something that's non-negotiable. I know now that it is very important to me. That is something that will make or break a relationship to an extent, because if you can't bond over that, like we've said, for me, that's just a big deal. And so as I'm getting to know someone, that's something I'm looking at and evaluating. And if I'm like, he doesn't get my humor at all. I don't get his. We never laugh at the same things. Like you're just misfiring and it's not going to work. So let that list be fluid, but then learn from your experience as you go to, to, inform that change in that list. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think we also need to remember that these preferences that become non-negotiables, they may not look the exact way you envision them in somebody else. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I may say like, it is a non-negotiable that he likes sports. He may love hockey and NASCAR, (laughs) which are two sports that I never watch, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Is that my first choice to go to a NASCAR race? Absolutely not. But would I go? Yes, because it's an athletic event and there's some competition to it Mm -hmm. and he would have his favorite driver and we, I would be willing to learn about it and all of that jazz. So don't get so honed in that, okay, not only does he have to like sports, but he's got to like basketball because that's what I love the most. And we also have to like the same college football team. No, that's where it gets super deep into your preferences. Yes. And that's like we, you were saying earlier, like the specificity of it needs to broaden a little. So that's why you say he likes sports. Don't say that really meaning he likes football and basketball or he likes tennis and golf or whatever. Like mm-hmm. truly have it be broadened. I think yeah. is important. Yeah, I agree. And going along to, I kind of want to go back to what you were saying a minute ago as far as just when you date more, those experiences are going to influence this list. There might be things that you either didn't think were a big deal or you didn't think of at all that could be part of this list until you dated somebody that had or didn't have those qualities. And now it's important enough that Mm -hmm. it becomes a non-negotiable. I mean, I know that's happened to me where there have been things that I never thought of. And then I dated a guy and was like, oh, I really liked that he had that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking for that from now on. Mm -hmm. Or, oh gosh, that did not work well. Right. And that is going to be a non-negotiable that I don't need to be with somebody that has that quality moving forward. So keep that in mind too, that you're going to learn the more you date, the more you experience, you know, the more this is going to develop. Oh yeah. The older you get, the more you date, the longer you've been dating in your life this list will refine. I think it's kind of a refining process. You're going to learn things about yourself as you grow up and date people. You're going to see how you are in relationships and how you interact in them. You're going to learn about relationships in general. And you're going to learn that every time you date someone, whether it's like you said, learning, oh, this works really well with someone or, oh, that did not mesh. You learn. And I think you take those experiences and then you refine what you're really looking for in this list, in this picture of what works well. It just gets better with age, I guess. Yes. You could say. There's a wise way to phrase that. (laughs) Now, I'm not saying that you go into dating someone just being like, hey, what can I learn from this? (laughs) Knowing it's not going to work out. You go into it, putting everything you can into a relationship, trying to get to that end of it working. But if it doesn't, learn from that, whether it be things you need to change or things you know do or don't work well from the other side as well. Yeah. And this is something that is, I think we've both gone through this, Mm -hmm. where you find yourself saying, why does this keep happening to me? Or I always seem to date the same type of guy over and over and over again. If you're asking yourself those questions, then you may need to take some time and reflect on your past relationships and try to learn from them in ways you may not have learned before so that you don't continue experiencing the same patterns. And you may need to adjust what's a preference that now needs to be a Mm non-negotiable. Because, I mean, I asked myself this question guess it's been two years ago now, where the three guys I dated between 
in like a five year span all ended for the same reason. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what am I attracting or what am I (laughs) looking for? Or what am I, what questions am I not asking early enough? Or what do I need to do differently so that this doesn't keep repeating itself? Because Mm -hmm. I, this is really crappy. (laughs) This keeps happening. So I had to, and I went and talked to one of my mentors about it and she kind of helped me work through it. But the point, like you said, is not to go into a relationship thinking, what can I learn from this? And you know, you should go into a relationship hoping it's going to work out, but you should also be intentional about learning from relationships that don't work out Mm -hmm. in order to make your future relationships better. Yeah. In any other realm of life, that would just be common sense. I mean, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. (laughs) So if you go into a dating relationship and you come out of it, And you don't learn anything, you don't change anything, like, that did not work. So, obviously there was a breakdown somewhere. And 9.7 times out of 10, that breakdown will not be entirely the other person. Oh, gosh. 0.3 times out of 10, maybe. Yeah. (laughs) But 9.7, it will not be. You can Google that statistic. (laughs) Yeah. Just kidding. So there are things that you should learn and change and adapt, even if those things that you're learning are what to look for in someone else. Because if you don't take anything from that, you're doomed to repeat the same things over and over. And I have told people before, if you are looking for a different output or a different result, you have to have a different input. You can't put the same thing into something and get something different out. You've got to change what you're putting into it, whether that be improving your own character, improving your walk with the Lord, changing things. I mean, you're always being sanctified. And so you've got to change and learn or you're never going to make progress. Exactly. My pastor actually just finished doing a series on relationships. And in one of the talks he did on dating, he said, if you want next time to be different than the last time, you have to do something different in the meantime. Yeah. And I loved that. Cause I'm like, exactly. Because otherwise next time is going to be exactly like last time. Mm-hmm. And who wants next time to be like last time? Cause clearly last time didn't work exactly. if it's a last time. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. And so we've asked the question, where do you draw the line? I think the answer is there are two lines. You have a hard, solid line at scripture. Nothing's going to cross that line. Like that is required. Then you have this group of things that are not mandated in scripture, but are pretty high up there for you. We're going to draw a dotted line after those. There's some give and take there. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of that dotted line is the things that are truly preferential that don't really matter. Yeah. And so some of those things may get moved over that dotted line. And some of the things that are on the important side of that dotted line may get taken off of it. There's some leeway there. Mm -hmm. But that hard, fast, solid line isn't going to move and it isn't going to change. That's scripture. Mm -hmm. And so leave that line alone and let the other one be where you move Shift things things back and forth. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Yes. No, I like that analogy a lot. I think that's good. Okay. So, yeah. Well, that's all we have for drawing the line or lines, shall we say, between non-negotiables and preferences. Also, if you are new to the podcast or if you haven't heard recently, we just launched our online dating resource kit. Go us. (laughs) Yes. Seriously, it's been a long time coming. We were ready to get this done. We were so ready to get this out to y'all. So this is just a really awesome group bundle gathering of resources. I don't know what word I'm trying to say that will help you. If you are starting online dating, if you're thinking of starting online dating, if you're restarting online dating, wherever you're at with setting up your profile and picking your pictures and getting conversations Mm -hmm. started or stop talking to the guy that you don't want to talk to anymore. (laughs) We covered it all. So if you want some more information on how to get your hands on that, go to our website, looking for the middle.com slash resources, or you can go to the homepage and there's a resources tab. Or the link is in our Instagram bio. We're really trying to make this easy. (laughs) One thing, can I point out one thing on that? We have it set up right now that in order to get all these resources, you go to our website, you click through to our Patreon, and then it's like a monthly support of the podcast so we can continue to create more resources for you guys. And just as an aside, you don't get just the resource kit. Mm -mm. We have, we're doing a monthly Q&A video just for our patrons. 
you get all of our content early so you get to hear the episodes before everyone else but so there's benefits to joining patreon and becoming a patron of the podcast but if you are interested in this online dating resource kit and you would rather just buy it once and not be in monthly support thing send us an email we don't have a way of setting that up right now to to get it to you all at once on our website but we can do it offline so to speak but still online just not through our website <laughs> so if you so if you are interested in just buying it all at once send us an email or shoot us a dm on instagram and we can work that out and get that to you all at once yes our email is in our instagram but it's also looking for the middle at gmail.com mm -hmm. super easy so be sure to check it out because i really think this is a good mm -hmm. way yeah. for you to be as informed and helped yeah. and not scared as possible <laughs> it's literally years of research and experience that we have put into audio form for you guys it's several hours yes so Go check it out. Definitely. And then come back on Friday for a Couchcast episode. Yes. And we don't know what it is yet because we haven't recorded it. <laughs> yeah. So we're about to go do that. So until then, I'm Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle. Looking for the Middle.